Hello friends, good morning. Uh, we have Anurag with us today. Let me introduce Anurag. Uh, he is an experienced CFO with about two and a half decades of experience, rich, diversified experience. Anurag has worked across various uh, segments of industries and he has also worked with Indian companies as well as multinationals at overseas locations. So brings uh, a great flavor, great blend and we can on all learn from him today. Thank you. Wonderful thank you. thank you for having me here. And thank you for coming. Yeah. It's, it's an honor talking to you. Absolutely. Pleasure is all mine. So Anurag, as uh, we were briefly chatting a while ago, you mentioned that you have worked in India as well as overseas. Uh, is it more or less an equal stint at this point in time both or uh, how is the percentage distribution? So, so overseas was about four years, uh, not long and luckily for me it came uh, a little bit earlier in my career. So I learned a lot from that. Uh, uh, but uh, the handling of international businesses, again in the current role also I look after uh, a lot of overseas investments and international business. Uh, so I would say about uh, six, seven years of experience of dealing with international markets uh, as an investor uh, or as the parent uh, per se. So, and today actually wherever you may be sitting, you're still international. Yeah, absolutely. Actually. Absolutely. The world is very small now. So. So, taking advantage of a fact that you have such a multinationality and multinational experience, I would like to know from you, uh, has the experience of working overseas and for companies who are headquartered out of India, vis-a-vis -vis companies working in India, whether they are domestic or trying to be internationalized now, uh, how, how different is the experience? Yeah, I think... Uh one of the biggest learnings or, uh, or what is the difference is once you start uh, move out of your home country and you stop dealing with people who are like yourself in terms of education, in terms of background, in terms of interest, etc. Sure. I think that's a big learning in life that how do you go to a new culture uh, and sort of adapt over there uh, and especially in groups where people from different countries are coming together and forming a management team is, is an amazing experience. Uh, you learn to pick up facial cues, you learn to pick up uh, unspoken uh, sort of uh, communications uh, uh, and all that and besides uh, the way it is coming, uh, we Indians have a different way of talking, communicating, uh, different nationalities. Uh, so, so one is learning the new ways uh, of doing this communication. Also, I think realizing the fact that uh, you're very comfortable when you're in India, you can talk about different things, you understand the nuances. Uh, but, but I think making yourself understood over there is again uh, a very important aspect. Very important. Well said. So one is people aspect and second is, let's say, a cultural aspect. And I always believe that a CFO is the kind of a CFO he is because of two main reasons. One is he himself, how he is as an individual, as his philosophy DNA. And second, largely is driven by what comes from top. Yeah. So if you compare these two pieces of your exposure, how different did you think uh, as a CFO from this aspect, other than the people aspect? Sure. So I've had the good fortune of working across the spectrum, right from a, a very uh, blue-blooded MNC to a very entrepreneur group and across the spectrum, almost every kind of businesses. Uh, I think uh, you, you have to figure out, as you rightly said, what's important to the shareholder or the investee who's there. Uh, if the importance is to preserve your reputation, preserve brands, preserve uh, market value, etc., uh, then then you have to be a different kind of CFO. If if the uh, shareholder mindset is more entrepreneurial, uh, they are constantly looking for new opportunities, then CFO has to be a different animal. He has to think. Uh, he has to get very close to the strategy. Uh, scan have the strategic mindset uh, himself. He cannot be reactive. He needs to pick up those cues from what he reads, what he sees in the economy, etc. Uh, so it's 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 a stage of business you are in, the kind of parent you have, the kind of shareholder you have, and that's where a CFO adapts. Uh, yeah. So uh, I would like to know if, let's say, you were given a choice to form a company which is ideal according to you, would you pick up best from both worlds, 
is it possible or is it like uh, a fantasy concept yeah and if it is possible then what would you do what would you take from both yeah i think it is possible to build it's not a fantasy concept a lot of mncs which we call today would have started as local companies in their countries say 100 years ago or whenever and then they started branching out uh, overseas you have many indian business houses and entrepreneurs uh, small or big you have startups who are going to different countries you have examples of oyo ola going to different companies and then you have examples of tatas and mahindras and uh, vedanta to going into different companies i think all sort of businesses are now uh, branching out uh, as you said world is a very small place uh, businesses are all global uh, i think important is to uh, is to figure out uh, the good things in both the models where you have one entrepreneur mindset where you want to go after growth and second is the good governance good values good brand reputation uh, good uh, business house reputation overseas uh, because as you go overseas, uh, you will need to recruit local talent. They will, they will simply Google your company and uh, try and see what you are in your parent company, uh, parent uh, country. Uh, how are you perceived by employers over there? Uh, you have websites talking about employee experience. Glass doors yeah, glass doors and all. You will be dealing with regulatory uh, agencies who will do the same thing. They will see what kind of uh, reputation you have here. Uh, you will need to have processes and systems which can be uh, spread across all the countries, but at the same time can, uh, can be tweaked to each country without going far away from your uh, corporate philosophy or your values or your vision, etc. Uh, so, so I think it is possible to do that. Indian companies are very good at uh, creating their entrepreneur mind, mind share. Uh, they are also now very good at creating brand value overseas. So if you go uh, to another country and now you talk about India and I've seen that uh, I, I worked overseas almost 15 years ago to when I go now as an investor in, in one of the very large emerging markets the kind of respect you get is very different uh, I think Indian business houses have gone through the curve and uh, you are talked about uh, very nice companies to work for good culture uh, etc so it's, it's a very very nice to see that journey so we are possibly fortunate to be in this phase, yeah. which is a very vibrant phase for Indian businesses. Today. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, believe me, a lot of Indian businesses are trying to uh, make best uh, best of this opportunity, the window which is there or the or the way we are uh, we are seen overseas. Uh, and I think it will continue to do. You will see many more companies going overseas. And there is a rejuvenated image of the country, right? Absolutely, absolutely. And. And within the possible investors today in the world, uh, you have Chinese, you have Indians, you have Europeans, you have Americans, uh, and some of the other Russians and uh, different countries. I think our country stands uh, very high on people's uh, mind in terms of how we do businesses, etc. So, so I think that way we are very lucky to have that image overseas. It's so energizing. To yeah, you. yeah. So looking at your total length of experience, Anurag, and we all know that time is changing. And the speed of change also is changing, you know. Uh, no more speed or, or the unit of speed ends at acceleration. Though physics doesn't go beyond acceleration, I always say now acceleration also is acceleration. Mm, you know, true, true. kind of change. True. So if you look at where you started your, your career from up to where you have reached, what do you see greatly changed? And because we are saying the rate of change is fast, possibly what has taken 20 years to change will change in the next two years. So how are you keeping yourself ready, agile? Uh, how do you anticipate change and be ready for it rather than waiting for it to come to you? Sure. So uh, I think it's it's been a journey of about 20, 23 years now. Uh, when I started out, uh, I think the CFOs were just coming out from from this bookkeeping and the finance hygiene mindset, there was a lot of talk about business partnering and, and how do we do business partnering. CFOs need to go to the market, CFO needs to understand what business is. I think we have taken, if you compare it to today, and you very rightly said, what's relevant today uh, may not be relevant tomorrow. The speed of change is very high. I talked about global businesses. I think very important for CFOs to get involved in strategy now how do businesses define strategy and right at the beginning to define what is core to your business which are the markets which are core to your business which are the businesses or sub businesses which are core what are the adjacent areas you want to go in what kind of investment would it require 
where will you get that investment from so so cfo in a in a growing business is has to be at the uh, at the forefront of uh, creating that strategy along with the ceo along with the uh, strategy department if there is one uh, but but as you get involved in that you need to a create that strategy and and that strategy uh, defines a lot of business plan uh, for current year next year etc so keeping a track on that business plan keeping an eye whether it's changing or not one more thing which i think is very important is creating a very uh, very robust and strong risk register so even if you say this is my strategy i'm going into this market things can change very suddenly and anticipating that risk beforehand even even thinking about okay this can go wrong this can go wrong and what is my response to it how can i mitigate that risk how can i do various things to so that i am not impacted if this risk was to come is again something very important in the cfo portfolio now you have uh, cfos who are driving the enterprise risk management strategy you have cfos who are very actively uh, leading that strategy along with the ceo reporting directly into the board uh, boards have now risk committees uh, so so i think this rap rapid pace of change the kinds of jobs we do as cfos uh, a risk management is a very important part of the portfolio along with creation of strategy itself sure. so a lot of rotation yeah some of it is force some of it is uh, you yourself take on that to be correct ready. absolutely uh, so one question comes to my mind as i pick threads from what we are speaking now let's say if you were to plan a cfo org organization 5 years back 10 years back and if you want to do it today it will happen out of a completely different state of mind so how do you plan today let's say which are the silos or sub silos under cfo that you think today are very important for an organization how do you uh, take this mutation as a factor to derive revised krs kpis uh, i'm not sure whether i'm able to no no definitely definitely it's a it's a very good question i think very uh, uh, i was just thinking on uh, and and uh, and i've been part of a business which is uh, which is uh, we are doing that right now so we are thinking on what should be the structure what should be the this thing i think there are as i said there are some hygiene uh, functions uh, which ensure that the company is thriving which are like the base so those those you have financial controller you have tax those kind of things which are which are there as part of cfo portfolio always one change which i am seeing happening and very important is we used to have financial planning and analysis and you used to recruit bright cas and uh, and people who can do this modeling etc i think that function while it retains that business partnering color to it i think more than uh, more than 50% now needs to have a strategy and strategic mindset so when finance team is being part of a strategic discussion you need to have resources or uh, function which can contribute towards it so that will constantly mean understanding the industry you are part of uh, what are the new opportunities which is opening up the economy linking the global economy to indian economy so those kind of thing so a mixture of a economist mindset a strategy mindset so and and frankly i think if if you were to recruit uh, uh, this sort of mindset which is which is really a mini cfo in itself you it, it's it's a bit difficult the other important factor and depends from industry to industry is some like i am part of infrastructure industry now uh, financing is raw material for infrastructure constant need of money etc so i think a good fundraiser whether it is equity debt etc i think depending on the business not all business may require it uh, but it's very important the third will uh, or the last one would be the risk management part of it uh, you used to have uh, internal audit functions internal audits used to sometimes report into board sometime to ceo sometime to cfo depending on the organization but clearly i think the risk management function should lie with the cfo function uh, whether it's part of internal audit or outside internal audit because it needs a lot of a uh, lot of focus to drive people to think about risk raise red flags not be afraid of call out when when you're going to do a investment say these are the risks have you guys thought of it let's not go ahead and cfo is a unique animal who can say that no please tell me what you're going to do about the risk then only we can go ahead with the investment sure. 
So I think this is how I'll, uh, I'll uh, devise the, uh, the, uh, the finance function. A lot of allied functions also get added, but that's like, uh, like secretarial, legal, etc. cetera. But, uh, but I think within finance perspective, uh, this is how uh, I would say, and, and that's how it has changed. Right. Well, great insight. Thank you very <laughs> much. So a lot has really changed. I also am curious to ask you, because you have worked across such a diversified mix of businesses, Let's say till till last night you were with FMCG and today morning you are with power and then you are with some other sector. So how do you maneuver a mindset of a CFO and yeah. you completely go across one heterogeneous business to another type of business? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, I think a CFO a lot of times need to have a and my favorite word is the P mentality. So if you look at all these PEs who invest in different businesses, they understand the sector, they understand the business, uh, and, and then they invest. I think if you enter a new sector and you've not worked in that before, you need to adopt that mentality to see what, what are the key drivers for the business, what drives the business, what kind of market we are in, what kind of uh, it, uh, regulatory scenario which is there. I think once you do that, you know okay, what business I am in, then figure out uh, what is important to the business from finance perspective. I'll take a few examples. For example, for FMCG, pharma, it will be the trade, the, uh, the business partnering aspect of it, what my competition is doing, what new brands are getting launched, what is my consumer like. If you move to retail, it will be all about inventory management. How do I put inventory on the shelf, where it gets picked up, what kind of inventory do I put, how do I monetize my retail space. If you look, come to infra, it is, it is uh, largely your, uh, your heavy capex. So how do you control the capex spend which is going? You are you're literally incurring tens and thousands of crores of capex. You are constantly raising money. So how do you do that? I think, and then you devise your organization, you reflect inward, see which of these I need to sort of uh, even brush myself uh, upon. Uh, which how, and if I am not got experience in that, how do I bring in people who are experienced in that so that they can support me? Uh, what are, and, and that's how I think it works in industries. You, you align with the management team, you understand what are their priorities. But I think if you adopt an investor approach, you will always come because you treat it as your own business. Yeah. So you see what works, what doesn't work, what drives growth, what can uh, damage value. And that's how you design it. So tremendous amount of ability to align and realign and yeah. be malleable and flexible. Absolutely. Absolutely, and uh, and finance folks have that. Mm. If you see most of the finance folks, uh, they can understand. Uh, they have this unique ability to understand the P&L balance sheet quickly. They just need to extend it to business, right. and say, okay, what are my business drivers? How do I uh, relate my P&L to that? So, when we talk about various segments, uh, irrespective of that, whether it is in the olden times or today's time. One thing always remains very important to a CFO, which is return on investment. Yeah. There is often a requirement to invest into some or the other kind of, whether it is technology, a new plant, extended manufacturing capacity, a new territory that you want to take up or whatever. So every time there has to be a projection, uh, a commitment from a stakeholder on ROI. And that's one of the main important drivers, how you will either approve or disapprove that investment. Yeah. But with the change being so fast, how do you handle that paradox of, let's say today you invest in some technology and you are given an ROI horizon of three years. Whether I could have planned it or it may be something completely unforeseen, but there's another change within the horizon of this ROI. And I come back to you as the same stakeholder again, yeah. saying that I need another investment. Now, you never know whether by denying that, are you going to harm the business more than benefit? True. Or do you need to go on approving further investments before even having realized the previous one? True. Long question, but I didn't know how to keep it short. <laughs> no, no, no. So how do you decide as a CFO? It's a very sticky situation, I think, for a CFO. True. No, uh, I think it's a dilemma which, which we face uh, in growing companies every day. You're very right. The change of pace is so high. There are so many factors within your control or outside control which can come in. I talked about risk register, but still there will be many risks which you can't have imagined at that point of time. Uh, I think uh, the way I approach it is, uh, first of all, why did we get into that 
investment at all right what was the logic why did we expand on it what was the broader purpose of it and strategy as i as i said earlier uh, i think after that it's a dilemma of saying are you, am i throwing good money after bad money am i throwing something into where it won't uh, recover at all uh, you need to have a lot of insights on what's happening uh, as i said earlier that it's no longer a business partnering function but but let's say a, biz, a function which knows uh, what is happening in the environment what is so so you need to be completely on top of you may maybe in the know as much as your business ceo is right so or, or the person who's heading that investment i think once you do that you have that feel that okay am i am i, am I doing it right or not uh, and it's ultimately it's a judgment call at the end of the day if you if if you feel that even after putting this money in paybacks is going into 10 years 5 years it's not there's no way uh, i think you have to take those calls but i think what helps on those calls as i said is knowing the business as much as possible uh, keeping in mind why did we make that investment at all uh, i mean is it really a long term thing or it was just tactical which i went uh, and just being very agile about it uh, being constantly in the know of what is happening with that investment uh not relying on secondary uh, information you may need to talk to uh, that plant or that country or or that brand people constantly uh so create a information system which is very live which is very agile and then use your commercial acumen to see uh, whether this makes sense to put in more money so it would be case to case there is absolutely. no uh, scale absolutely that absolutely that and again i think it will be person to person because as you said it has to be more or less a judgment your call based on your assessment absolutely so the way you may look at it as a cfo and if i were to look at it as cfo may again differ yeah so one way to institutionalize this is that if you create all those risk register etc very robustly you may cover 90% at least right. and if it is really robust and and if a incident occurs or 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 a adverse event occurs we should one should reflect back that why did we lose why did we miss out uh, in the risk uh, sure. assessment sure. Uh, and that's the only way to institution because then you can get group think involved right. you will know what your business guy is thinking you'll know what your shareholder thinks about it you know what your board thinks about it uh, rather than reacting to it uh, it's almost like machine learning yeah I absolutely would. absolutely it's so you get inputs put back into the system see what comes out enrich it yeah enrich it something more and absolutely yeah. absolutely so you have had close to two and a half years of tenure now a greatly successful tenure achieve accolades achievements uh, when you look back there are aspirants who possibly are standing there where you were one day yeah uh, but the time ahead that was there for you from then on and the time that is ahead for them from here on is a lot different true so any advice from you to them about how they could do they could succeed like you have succeeded absolutely so i think when we started or when i started really uh, it has changed a lot so if you look at it uh, we were very happy to get a uh, uh, to get a placement call from the campus there was hardly any companies who used to come to see a campus at that point of time now people have many options people have uh, uh, pe- people have many many opportunities which are there we also used to follow what our senior said okay uh, why don't you go and and we used to think he thinks best for us my boss thinks best for me so if we saying go and do this assignment i'll just go and do that assignment right uh, and and nature will take its course i think today is the guy who's starting out or who's in the younger uh, or the earlier part of his career is very very well aware very very well uh, spoiled for choice so he at a point of time if if a guy with say 5 years experience wants to step out he will have four or five offers uh, straight away uh, so and and this is what we see with the newer generation they have a lot of cho- choices they have a lot of thing and they can think on their own uh, while we were more driven by what our seniors were doing or what my friends were doing etc etc also uh, if i'm not interrupting our generation was brought up in an environment of constraints yeah and this generation has been brought up in the environment of abundance correct that has a lot of reflection absolutely. on how they choose absolutely absolutely choose and they are not worried about whether i'll have a job tomorrow or not and and that drives a lot of decision which brings if if i were to advise the newer guys or the guys who are uh, just starting out or some some years under their belt uh, i think one needs to have a perspective so i see a lot of young guys moving from one role to other within within 2 years or 
within even three years by just saying that okay somebody is giving more money or that sector is really hot right now everybody is doing that uh, not really seeing what kind of work work content they are they are sort of getting into so i'll say keep a perspective a uh, lot of times you'll hear uh, rumors about your company or a lot of times you'll hear that okay this company is really bad nothing happens here my boss is really bad believe me everywhere it's the same eventually you you end up in this so if you are making choices make choices because you want to get to somewhere not because you want you are leaving somewhere very nice so you should see where where i want to be and then go for those choices rather than saying okay this doesn't work here let me try elsewhere absolutely so so create a perspective in your mind a larger perspective on the sector on the business create a perspective on your own own career planning on where do you see yourself in 5 years 10 years you you would really have role models or or think okay i want to do this i want to be an entrepreneur i want to be a cfo or or i want to be a really a tax expert uh, so 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 that's if that's a direction that's a direction and then constantly work to strengthen your profile per se rather than jumping from one role to the other see money comes eventually uh, big salaries come eventually Uh, if you are going to do well it will come eventually so don't worry about uh, a raise don't worry about uh, see where where you are going rather than what you are leaving it would be my mantra over here uh, and just go on that path and i think what you are saying also one one aspect or maybe one color to it is while you choose your next move you also need to decide your minimum tenure yeah because depth also is important absolutely absolutely you need to have diversity you need to have width in your exposure but if you only have width with very little depth it doesn't matter it doesn't matter doesn't matter and if you have cfo who is 30 years or 25 years experience but is not deep into any domain he will not be able to progress there true 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 and 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 when we are picking up uh, candidates even now in senior roles for finance we really see how deep they are it really doesn't matter you have 20 years experience and you have to change 10 to 12 jobs in uh, this thing and and really looks bad at that point of time so i think people should choose wisely their uh, their choices uh, as i said don't leave anything make changes because you want to go there rather than uh, you're leaving something choose where you're going yeah don't just leave leave something yeah. yeah very right yeah. thank you so much all right thank you as i said honor and joy talking to you we all learned so much uh, we hope we will interact at some point in time again and learn more from you absolutely it's it's been a great pleasure uh, and it's been a learning experience to talk to you as well so thanks. so thanks thanks a lot thank you